Vape News Radio, the voice of vaping. In each show, we share the latest about regulations and things you need to know, plus upcoming conferences and fests, along with interviews with the movers and shakers in this fabulous vape space. Are you looking to get into this ever-expanding marketplace? Do you want to master this industry? Listen up as Norm Bauer, the vape mentor, shares it all. And here's your host, Norm Bauer. And hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to part two. We're calling this the RJ Vapor Show because we have an interview coming up in just a few minutes with RJ Vapors, which of course is a division of RJ Reynolds. But before we get into that, we want to say hey and howdy to one of our brand new advertisers, and they are called Aqua Vapor. E-cigarette companies, you know, they're popping up everywhere, but none. Hey, there you go. A little bit of a delayed applause. You know, e-cig companies are popping up everywhere, but none can really compare with Aqua Vapors. With about seven years' experience in the industry, as well as the largest selection of quality e-cig products and accessories, why go anywhere else? Aqua Vapor has the authentic brand name products you want at competitive prices, and a friendly, knowledgeable staff is available to assist you with all your questions, whether you are a beginner or or an advanced vapor. Mention Vape News Radio. Get an additional 10% off their already low prices. Give them a ring at 888-782-0167. Go online to getmyesig.com. That's getmyesig.com. Or visit one of their retail locations today. All right, let's get started here because... Okay, we are getting started here. Do you hear that? That's the sound of freedom, man. That's the jets flying overhead. That's right. You know, I love businesses that are disruptive and upend the status quo. And, you know, we encounter that all the time in the entrepreneurial world, but it's a lot less common to find disruptions in what I call big business. I was able to interview Imran Khan. He's the marketing group at R.J. Reynolds' new division called R.J. Vapors. And I loved this conversation. They see the future. They're part of it. They are just now launching Views. That's V-U-S-E. They tested it in beta in Utah and Colorado. And you know what? They kicked ass. They pretty much dominated the e-cig industry. And they're going to be rolling it out in Wisconsin and Indiana by next month, by June. And then into 15,000 locations nationwide. So listen up as you hear this great interview we did with Imran Khan with RJ Vapors. I'm actually thrilled today to have on um, not just one but two special guests from a company that I really, really admire because they are extraordinarily forward-thinking in this e-cigarette industry. And I'm on the phone with Imran Khan, who is with RJ Vapors, and also joining him is Richard Smith, who is their media conduit for RJ Vapors as well. And why I specifically am excited to speak to them is These folks here actually decided to spin off R.J. Reynolds into a separate division and roll out their own line of e-cigarettes, which I'm going to have Imran share with you about. So, uh, Imran, welcome to Vape News Radio. Thank you, Norm. It's great to talk to you. All right. So, first up, tell us tell us what the motivation was or the impetus was to take a company of such a large stature like R.J. Reynolds, and actually see that there was a marketplace for e-cigarettes and to spin it off into a different division, because that I admire tremendously. Okay. Um, well, you know, our R.J. Reynolds tobacco, and we've stated this um, publicly, is that we are we are all about transforming and leading the transformation of, of uh, tobacco. And one of the key pillars of that is to be able to offer um, adult tobacco consumers alternative products that would allow them to switch over from Combust, uh, uh, regular combustible cigarettes to, you know, alternative um, smoking products. And so, you know, you, you look at this uh, e-cig category, when we first started to look into this e-cig category, there's a tremendous amount of uh, interest from adult tobacco consumers in the category. Um, you know, roughly 50% of them have tried electronic cigarettes. But the big problem that we saw when we were looking into the category was that while there is a lot of interest among adult tobacco consumers and there's been a tremendous amount of, of trial, there's very little switching that was actually happening. And so why is that? Uh, the reason for that uh, that we saw was that there were a lot of products out there that just don't meet their expectations. There were a lot of inferior products. 
most of the products in the electronic cigarette company are based on the same sort of uh, uh, technology platform, handmade in China. And what we wanted to do was to organically develop a product in-house that would meet their expectations. And so that's really the genesis of Views. And, and what we did with Views is that, you know, the real hero with the product um, is the smart technology that's embedded in, um, in our electronic cigarette. It's powered by a vapor delivery uh, processor that works in conjunction with the cartridge to essentially regulate the heat and the power, um, you know, up to 2,000 times a second. So what that actually ensures for the consumer is that they're getting a perfect puff not only the first time, but a consistent experience throughout. Um, even the, la the last puff is as good as the first puff, and that's one of the real problems that we saw with uh, existing products out there is that while it, they may start off good, they quickly decline in, in experience. And not only that, but we're also very proud that, you know, our product is designed and assembled in the USA. We felt like we needed to do that to ensure the highest quality. And uh, it's, it's made with an automated process that also ensures, you know, it's a very, it's a key ingredient in ensuring that there's consistency in the cartridges that we have out there. And really what, you know, what we rely on and what we're about is that, you know, we've been in this industry for 100 years and we've got tobacco experts that know what adult tobacco consumers, in particular adult smokers, are looking for in terms of taste and, and flavors. And we really leverage that to create our V-Liquid, which, um, you know, it, it comes from 100 years of, of experience. We wanted to have a product that was convenient for consumers to find um, out in traditional retail and easy for them to use, and it's, that's what Views is, is when you go out and buy, uh, buy Views as a consumer, you take it out of the packaging and it's ready to use. It comes fully charged. We also made the conscious decision of having a rechargeable device to ensure that, you know, we're minimizing the impact on, on the environment, but it's also easy for consumers to be able to recharge the power unit, and all they have to do consequently is buy cartridges. So that, wow. that in essence, is really – the genesis of views and, and how it actually started. And it's really, again, it's a tangible example of our company leading the transformation of, of tobacco. And, you know, we are seeing switching actually happening in the markets that we're in. That's, and I'm going to jump in here for a moment because you threw a lot out there, which I think is amazing. So right now you gave us a 30,000 foot view, which is exactly where I wanted to start. And I wanted to kind of drill it down into a couple of different things. One is the fact that I think a lot of people are dismayed by e-cigarettes because of exactly what you described. They find that the flavor is just not there. So I'm guessing that it took you a while to come up with just the optimum flavor that people like, and do you offer just one flavor, or do you offer more than one? It, well, to answer your question, it did take us a while, and, and, you know, that was another conscious decision that we made was that we could have been earlier to the market, but we decided that being best to market was really more important than being first to market. So we currently we offer two flavors in uh, Utah and Col in, uh, Utah and Colorado, our two, uh, what we call our two lead markets. One is a uh, non-menthol flavor. Um, essentially similar to a non-menthol cigarette flavor, and then the other one is the menthol flavor. And yes, okay. and they've been, uh, it's been a, our R&D folks have spent a tremendous amount of energy and resources in getting that flavor just right because, you know, we know that for, a, for an adult smoker to actually switch to electronic cigarettes, they're going to obviously want flavors that are uh, not only familiar but very good, and that's where our expertise really comes in. As someone who's been in the tobacco industry for a while, do you find it to be quite um, quite a a new paradigm shift to go from what has been a traditional combustible cigarette for decades, now describing your product as a vapor delivery system? I mean, seriously, have we not just jumped back to the future? I mean, it's pretty amazing the technology that's involved, and I'm sure that you spent tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to develop this product uh, to roll it out. So. This is very good because I think initially, quote unquote, big tobacco, I don't think they realize, and maybe you can share this, that, that e-cigarettes and vaping was going to be as much of a market, uh, um, uh, uh, market competition as what it has resulted to being. What do you think? 
Well, I mean, I think it is a, to go back to your, to your uh, question, it's a very much a paradigm shift for us. Um, you know, we, it, on the views team, we consider ourselves to be playing in the technology field. You know, we were at CES earlier this year, which, uh, you know, just two years ago, three years ago, we would have never even imagined a, uh, RJ Reynolds tobacco representing itself at CES. We wouldn't have had anything there to represent. So, a huge paradigm shift. We look at now, you know, a lot of what's going on in the technology world versus what's going on in, you know, the traditional consumer goods uh, packaging world. So it has been a huge paradigm shift for us. Um, you know, I can't really get into all of the investment that we've made in this development of this category, but suffice it to say, it's been very, very significant, and it's been, you know, the main focus of the company for the last uh, three to four years. Uh, That's awesome. All right, so you rolled this out in Utah and Colorado. Why? Any specific reason that those particular states were chosen, and and when do you see the rollout uh, of the rest of the country? Well, we rolled out, and Colorado was our first uh, state that we rolled out into, which was in July, August of, of, uh, of last year. And in determining, um, you know, and when we go through this process for any sort of uh, product that we would launch into a market, there are a lot of business dynamics that we look at into in terms of the category. Um, we try to find markets that we can go to that, you know, meet all of the business requirements for that product, you know, whether it's the retail environment, where, whether it's the business dynamics within that state in the tobacco category. So, you know, Colorado really stood out for us, and it was a, a, a good state for us to roll out into. Uh, and we did that, as I said, in July and or August of, of last year. Utah came earlier this year. It was uh, late January, early February. We were looking for another state to expand into, and, again, Utah met our requirements. In terms of uh, looking out into the future, we are looking to expand into two more states, in early June, um, and they and those are the states of Indiana and Wisconsin. And then quickly after that, really by the end of June, uh, we're going to be expanding out into an additional 15,000 stores, um, which essentially puts us um, on a national scope because these 15,000 outlets are leading convenience um, outlets, and they basically represent a national footprint for us. Um, that is amazing. That, it, I'm sorry. No, you lose it. I'm sorry. I was just going to finish up by saying that after that 15,000 store expansion in late June, you will continue to see more expansions throughout the year, basically expanding on the distribution. That's amazing. So um, I think it's smart, obviously, as an entrepreneur to do something on a, on a testing scale as do you, because obviously this is a significant uh, resource of, you know, it takes a lot of resources for you guys, both monetarily and time-wise, to, to roll this out on a nationwide scale. So do you have a, an ETA is when you think that you'll have pretty much 50-state penetration with, uh, with the views? Well, I mean, the 15,000 stores that we're going to be expanding into in late June will essentially give us a 50-state 50, 50 presence. We are going to continue to deepen that presence with more and more retail outlets throughout the year. That's awesome. So I'm curious about something, and I want to go back to one of the things that intrigued me from the beginning is that um, uh, several of your competitors who will not be named, they, um, they are usually either buying another company or they're developing their own under their own umbrella, but you took the very significant step, which is really kind of what really, really drew my attention, is that you actually created another company as opposed to just keeping it under the R.J. Reynolds umbrella. Um, can you share with us was that, was that more of a sign of your commitment to the fact that you absolutely see the future here, and rather than keeping it under one company, to actually spin it off into its own separate entity? Well, I mean, I think there are a lot of uh, sort of corporate stewardship um, things that go into creating the separate company. But really for us on a marketing standpoint, the reason why we wanted to create a separate company and look at, you know, R.J. Reynolds Vapor Company as a separate company is because this is a very, very different and a very new um, uh, opportunity for us, and we wanted to make sure that we were treating it in that way. That really, I mean, those are the real reasons why we created a separate company. It's, it's a lot of it has to do with operating reasons at the very highest levels of of REI. But from a marketing standpoint, it was to really look at this as the unique opportunity that it it actually is, 
And there's some differences between, uh, you know, uh, the vapor business versus the traditional tobacco business, if you will. Absolutely true. And do you have the uh, do you have the luxury of of giving me one more interview segment because we're running out of time here in this segment here? Can I um, can I bring you back for another segment because of a couple of things that you spoke on that I would love to drill down into. One is the U.S. made market, and I'd love to see um, you know or, or share your thoughts and your opinion on on where you see the projections of the industry as a whole in about ten years. Can you join us for for one more segment? Absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Vape News Radio. This is your host, Norm Bauer, and I'm on with Imprint Khan from RJ Vapors, along with Richard Smith, also with RJ Vapors, and you've just heard some pretty insightful things. And we're going to take a little break, and we're going to come back in just a few moments, and we're going to pick this up, and we're going to drill down some information. Do not go away. We're going to be right back. <sighs> All right, let's pick it up with Norm here. Some pretty interesting stuff there. I, I a lot of fascinating stuff in there. Like, why did they pick uh, those states, and why did they separate the company out? And I, I think there's a lot of hidden stuff that needs to be delved into here. Thank you very much, Paul. Indeed, indeed. And for those of you who have questions, please let us know. Just go ahead and send a note to norm at vapementors.com. So there's a couple of things that really kind of caught my attention. One is they don't call cigarettes regular cigarettes yeah, anymore right. they call them non-menthol and menthol good question why utah why colorado well they went to colorado before the marijuana law was passed so that may or may not have anything to do with it another thing that came out of that is that he referenced the ces show which is a consumer electronic show and you know whoever would have thought a handful of years ago that the tobacco industry would have a presence at a consumer electronic never, show never which is typically one of the largest in las vegas with north of uh, 100,000 people in attendance. And also, it's interesting, again, because there's an absolute line in the sand between the vaping industry and the e-cig industry. And in my opinion, I don't see R.J. Reynolds or R.J. Vapors getting into the e-cig industry. And so, um, again, there's a lot of interesting things going on, a lot of dynamics. Do not go away. We're going to take a little break, and we're going to come back for part two of this interview. You are listening to Vape News Radio, the voice of vaping. We'll be right back, guys. Stick around. You're listening to Vape News Radio, the voice of vaping. With your host, Norm Bauer, the vape mentor. 